Hey folks, this is Ed Beard again with the Employer's Edge and we ran into just an absolutely fascinating discussion last week on the subject of empowering people. The internal surveys at the organization were all screaming the employees, hey, empower me, empower me. So the bosses said, okay, yeah, we can do that. You are empowered to do a task. But here's the problem. The employees were not picking up the ball on it. They were being empowered to do it, but they weren't actually doing it. So the bosses are saying, hey, we have to take these projects back. We have to take our empowerment back because we empowered you to do it, but you're not doing it. And here is what we revealed is the issue in the disconnect of empowerment. I want to share this with you because perhaps you can learn from this conversation also to help empowerment be more successful in the organization. What the bosses were not doing is empowering at the highest level. They were just empowering at the task level and they were not successful doing it. Empowerment is a huge word, means a lot. Big meaning behind that. So in order to be successful at empowering tasks, start with empowering concepts. Empower, empowerment itself. See what these bosses were doing, what these leaders were doing is they were giving a kite to someone and say, hey, go fly this kite but they were not giving them the wind to fly it in. And in this case, wind shows up in the case of trust, communication, and accountability. If you want to empower people to do a task, don't start with the task. You have to empower empowerment, then you have to empower trust. You have to empower communication, you have to empower accountability, or the task is not gonna happen. And so this really rested back on the boss's shoulders for not being effective at empowering at a higher level. But they were blaming the people for not doing what they were told or doing what they were asked, what was asked of them. And so let me give you an example. So we had one leader who empowered one of her teammates to, or one of her employees to manage a process. And involved in that were, were timelines. But the employee right off the bat was coming up three weeks late. And so the boss said, the leader was, you know, you asked for this. I gave it to you, but you're not doing it. And the boss says, I have you know, office hours every day from one to three. And if you are confused, you need direction, you need help, come into my office, speak freely, let me know what's going on. And the employee was saying, boss, leader, those office hours don't work for this process. See, if the employee needed help at 3.30, they were a half hour outside of the boss's office hours. And so they had to wait till the next day at one o'clock to solve a simple communication issue. See, the structured communication the leader was offering was not empowering. And because of that, the task didn't get picked up. The task really the, the, was not empowered. They didn't really delegate that to the degree that they thought. The same goes for trust. The same goes for accountability. And if you want to be more successful at empowering people to do a task, start high. Empower empowerment itself. Then come down into that. Give your people the wind to fly their kite. Empower trust, empower communication, and empower accountability. Then and only then can you move down to the task level and expect people to be successful at the empowerment that you are actually delegating to them. Do it in that order. Learn what we learned last week from this client and I think you're going to be more successful at empowering your people to perform better. This is Ed with the Employer's Edge. I hope that helped.